Dance Expressions is well known for their mastery of popular dance moves in the Jamaican space, but not many of us are aware of the scope of their contribution to, to the globalization of our dancehall culture. And wait till you hear what its leader, Ovil the dance professor, comes to share with us right here on our stage. The battle for leadership of Jamaica's opposition, People's National Party, is heating up. And as the two contenders, Lisa Hanna and Mark Golden, seek to win over delegates of the party, Dan Sword appears to be a campaign tool like we saw in the just concluded general elections. But what's Mark Golden's dance hall credentials? And more importantly, his legislative agenda for entertainment in Jamaica? We will put those questions and more to Mr. Golden right here on our stage. This week's trending and more are all coming up. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Winfred Williams. We'll be back. Stage, so much more than entertainment. And we're back with a trending countdown for this week, the top 10. Cast day, so by Chronic Law, kickstarts our countdown this week at number 10. While Label Mate Squash is this week's number 9 with POTUS. Vibes Cartel and Sicker Rhymes skate into the number 8 position. While Tommy Lee is a heavyweight at number 7. Big Drip by TJ is the number six song on our countdown this week. And starting off our top five, Skilly Bang takes on the road. Eastside got close like he a care fed. Why if he run like reindeer? Chanel Muir with Yama Bella is still high on our countdown and is this week number four. And you feel learn free deep in for yourself. While Squash with Fear Nobody is number three. Oh, I mean the, of them I mean no the number two track on our countdown is Alkaline with Total Murder. And the Skilly Bang rules the countdown this week at number one with Crocodile Teeth. This is his side, then you're no crisis. I'm not doing cool like we. with us right here on stage still to come dance expressions is well known for their mastery of popular dance moves in the jamaican space but not many of us are aware of the scope of their contribution to the globalization of our dancehall culture and wait till you hear what its leader Ovil the dance professor comes to share with us the battle for leadership of Jamaica's opposition, People's National Party, is heating up. And as the two contenders, Lisa Hanna and Mark Golden, 
seek to win over delegates of the party, dance hall appears to be a campaign tool, like we saw in the just concluded general elections. But what's Mr. Mark Golden's dance hall credentials? And more importantly, his legislative agenda for entertainment in Jamaica. We will put those questions to Mr. Golden right here on our stage. All coming up. We'll be back. Stage, so much more than entertainment. The battle for leadership of Jamaica's opposition People's National Party is in full gear right now. And as the two contenders, Lisa Hanna and Mark Golden, seek to win over delegates of the party. Mm -hmm. Reggae appears to be a campaign tool like we saw in the just concluded general elections. Right. But what is Mark Golden's reggae credentials? And more importantly, legislative plan for Jamaica's entertainment. Mark Golden is on our stage right now and we're going to put those questions directly to him. Mr. Golden, sir, welcome. Mr. Williams, pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's my pleasure, sir, to have yeah. you. Yeah, man. You know, um, but you know, you, you, first of all, their, your own personal disappointment mm -hmm. with the recent general elections. Yeah. Well, we know we suffered a devastating defeat because mm -hmm. we only ended up with 14 seats out of 63 and many good MPs who had served the people well and put in a lot of effort and resources, ended up losing, and losing quite badly in some instances. So mm -hmm. we recognize that the party needs to really wheel and come again. We need to really rebuild the party. And the whole of the campaign that we're now on, Lisa and myself, is really about who is best to do that, and the delegates will make that decision. It's a respectful campaign. Mm -hmm. Lisa's my friend, my comrade, and I will work with her. She will work with me going forward, whatever happens. So, you know, we want to really change the paradigm as to how internal party elections have been run so that the party ends up being stronger rather than fragmented at the end of the process. And she and I are both committed to that, for which I'm very grateful. Did you always have aspirations for the leadership of the party? To be honest, I have really been a team player. I've been quite happy to serve the movement in whatever capacity I have been asked to. I've been a senator, I'm a member of parliament, I was minister of justice in the last government, mm -hmm. I've been treasurer of the party, I've been on the executive for many years and so on. So I'm somebody who's committed to serving Jamaica through the People's National Party as a vehicle of change, of transformation. In terms of leadership, I have seen the situation that we now are in, where we're coming from, how badly we were beaten, the weaknesses that we need to correct mm -hmm. in the party to rebuild and become strong again. I just think that this is my time really to offer myself, not because of any egotistical reason, but primarily because people want to see me go forward, and I believe I have what it takes to lead the party effectively. So that is why I'm putting myself forward. The impression I have is that people wanted you more than you wanted to do it, because we have <laughs> never heard you 
doing or saying anything like you want to lead. That, uh, but I, people are always saying and yeah. calling up your name in leadership. Boy, about it's so leadership. Going on. You know, many are called, have chosen, are few. But I must tell you that it is something which is a big decision for me. And it's a big change in my life. But I've committed myself to it. And when I commit myself to something, I really give it my all. And I bring integrity to it and ethics and a lot of love and respect for people. And that is what I'm about, really, at this time. All right, so before I ask you why <laughs> should they choose you over Miss Hannah, oh. I'm, go I'm going to ask you about your music credentials, your dancehall credentials. Yes. Uh, because it, but first of all, the question of the use of music in mm -hmm. the campaign. Yes. Are you using music in your campaign? Well, I have always been involved in music from as a child, I, was a, I used to sing at the, um, my, in my school choir. I was a soloist back then. Um, as a teenager, I was in a couple of bands, and I write music. And then later on, as an adult, I got into um, music production. I formed a label with a friend, Ray Hitchens, who's a very accomplished musician and engineer. Mm -hmm. And we produced three albums, um, including the acclaimed Ashes on the w Windowsill by Della Manley, her first album and also an instrumental reggae album by a trumpeter called Mickey Hansen called For the Love of It. And a, and a concept album, which was really a reggae mass, um, a former Catholic priest had this idea of celebrating the new millennium in the year 2000 with a, a reggae mass. And we brought in some top artists, including Toots. Toots is on that album, God bless it. Mm. And may his soul rest in peace, Toots, yes. So I, I wrote, I've written campaign songs for, for um, for, for PMP MPs before in there, and, in, oh. and yeah, and, and even for the party in the twenty yeah. in the twenty eleven campaign, I did a, I did a camp, I produced a campaign song which I had written. So I've been involved in music thoroughly, and as a young man, we used to love go dance, you know, and them thing there. <laughs> in those days, it was Jalo with Ila with the selector and Brigadier yeah. there on the microphone stand. And of course, Kilimanjaro would early be on Supercat, and everybody of my generation used to rate Supercat as a DJ, you know, as an up-and-coming DJ. Peter Metro is another DJ I respect from Metro Media and so on. So that is one, in fact, that is a route that I have really gone into the culture, the country, and really learned more about Jamaican people at all levels, because my father was a professor at UWE, first professor of orthopedics at the University mm -hmm. of the West Indies. But we lived on Mona campus near Augustown and Hermitage and used to play ball with the man them and through music, you know, and parring with them, kind of got a, a sense of what Jamaica is really about and how, the struggles that the Jamaican people face. And that is one of the reasons why I feel now well, well conditioned in terms of understanding to move into leadership. Wow. That was, I mean, so, I'm a corporate lawyer, so I'm, I'm, I'm really in the world of finance and the legal aspects of finance, but music, because of my involvement in the music industry, and I did intellectual property as one of my master's degree courses when I was, um, did my LLM, which is a master's degree in law. So I've actually represented quite a few artists over my time, Big Up Richie Stevens, Nadine Sutherland, Cotty Ranks, and others, you know? But I want to tell you, you asked about elections and music. Yeah. And in the last general election, just gone, in South St. Andrew, which is my constituency, which as you know is Trenchtown, Arnett Gardens, you know, Jonestown and Rosetown and Rima. So we had a, um, an innovation where we, we launched a song competition um, for the best campaign song for Mark Golding's campaign, you know, um, with a prize for the, first, the person who came first and the second and third. And we threw it out there and we got, I think, 15 produced songs were submitted, which um, were then ranked online. We did an online poll mm -hmm. to decide who the winner was. And, um, and, and it was great, you know, it was well received. And I've really supported the music industry in the constituency, Triple L in, in Jonestown, you know, the Big Link Productions in Angola, and now a new one called Crow Records. Um, and up at Ivy Road. So big up all of, um, all of the producers and artists in, 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 in South St. Andrew, you know. Um, you know, say, I have your back and will support you every time. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, it's like a, a quiet storm in music. <laughs> <laughs> a powerhouse in music well, heading uh, for the top job. Yeah, well, it's a love, it's a passion, you know. Music is a thing that is like a food for the soul, you know. So I, I, I love music. <laughs> well, you, you, a video that went viral. Mm-hmm. Is proving that. <laughs> Let's take a look at it right here. Oh my goodness.
<laughs> yeah, man, that's, that's me and my comrades, you know, that's Carly Smith Drive, right by uh, my community in Arnett Gardens called Brooklyn, you know, and I, yeah. well, that's, I think, 2017 that video was taken. So, like, you're doing it for the love yeah. and not the like, right? <laughs> this music. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that is a shocker. Mm. I mean, and most of us wouldn't expect you to be. When we, when we the call that is your whole a vibe. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> when yeah. I call well, I didn't you know, know it was being videoed. Probably if, <laughs> if I had that, I would have been a little bit more less, less um, expressive, you know. But oh, no, no, man, no, you and the people have love it. You don't get wicked up. So it go on. Okay, nice. Yeah. All right, sir. So let's talk a little bit now about mm -hmm. your, your plan for. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first of all, I'd like to ask you about the impact of COVID mm. on entertainment yeah man so many musicians out of a job right now not working these guys a lot of them as you would know would be overseas touring and mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that we had no plan in place mm -hmm. to address something like this yeah it's the no the the the, the novel mm -hmm. um coronavirus yes but true when you look at how it is being managed by the present administration mm -hmm. Would you do anything? Would you, if you were in office, would you have done anything differently? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a difficult, it's always, you know, easy to stand back and, and criticize and so on, you know. But truthfully, um, the entertainment sector has been really hard hit by it because yes. both um, the sort of more commercial side of it on the North Coast and the artists who serve the hotels and do, you know, the shows up for the tourists and so. And of course, with the um, lockdown of Jamaica, which took place in terms of the borders and the, so many hotels going out of business temporarily, hopefully, it has meant that those artists are, and musicians are not getting a food off of that. Mm. And then, of course, for our reggae artists too, as you say, the ones who tour um, and, and this is how they make most of their money. And that has been really curtailed because of this whole pandemic. So in terms of a response, um, we, saw the, we saw the online events, um, yes. you know, the, the, ver the, the one that Beanie and Bounty did, you know, and how that took off and really um, went viral across the world, so mm. to speak. And I think that that is something we should be doing. We should use more creatively at, at a time like this. You know, I think this is an opportunity for even the government to help promoters promote online events with our artists, maybe twinning with, we could twin it with Soka, uh, you know, for Trinidad, we could twin it with Afrobeats from West Africa, and we could twin it with uh, South African music too, and have like a cultural milieu on, with, uh, through an online experience which could be promoted around the world. And that would be an opportunity for income to be earned, artists to be promoted and so on, and develop a new channel for, for, of distribution and, and, and selling ourselves as um, musicians to the world. So I think that's an area where we need to put more effort and be a bit more proactive and creative as well. I mean, the whole question of the social distancing rules, and, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't want to second guess those things because every day now, people are dead from COVID. So, you know, we have to be very careful about it and have to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. But having said that, the whole permitting system, and this is not just COVID related really, because this predates that, but the way in which entertainment, the right to put on entertainment operates in Jamaica, I don't think is a good system. I'm not happy with it because even in my constituency, which is where I'm familiar with it, which is the heart of reggae music, Trench yes, Town, you know? Of course. And the people love the music and love them entertainment. It is, they find it very difficult oftentimes to put on a little party or a little dance or whatever it may be because the, the permitting system which is administered it is, it's administered as a law enforcement tool and often in a way that appears quite arbitrary. So some a community down there, so they might get permit and up by us we can't get none. You know? mm -hmm. and, and, the, and many people make a living off of the music, you know? whether it be the round robin bar system or whether it be the cane man, the soup man, uh, the people doing their hair for the ladies who come in, uh, people making the outfits for all those kind of things. So it's a big industry at the grassroots level and we really need to facilitate it. We have an idea, mm -hmm. which we were pursuing, of um, having entertainment zones legislated yes. for, where, which wouldn't be subject to the normal limits of, of, of how late you can go. Because that's another bone of contention, mm -hmm. as you know, where people have to lock down at a certain time, and, if, and, it, and then often that is a, a hustling thing <laughs> that come out of that and so on. But the idea was we have certain designated places around the corporate area and other parts of Jamaica, because not just Kingston, um, where 
entertainment events can take place uh, and, and uh, they're properly designed and configured for that, parking arrangements, etc., security and so on. And, and that can be where visitors can come, our Jamaican people can come and so on and do their thing. And I think that was something we were working on quite hard uh, and uh, had reached a certain point. And um, I don't know what has happened to it. It seems to have stalled. But I think we need to have something like that because um, we need to encourage our nightlife in the country and not just on the corner, but right. also at a bigger level as well. So that's something that you would revisit yeah, if definitely. you were elected to the top job? Definitely. My, my friend Damon Crawford was the architect of that. And um, he had, I'd helped him to develop the policy from the legislative standpoint because that was my area of expertise in the government at the time. And um, we, we did quite a lot of work on it. And I, I know he's anxious to see it brought to fruition as well. So, uh. But in terms of a care package, because mm -hmm. we've seen this care thing being talked about. But mm -hmm. I don't know that, is there, isn't there something more that could be done for right. artists, especially players of instruments? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there should be. Who would have yeah. any income when yeah. there is no tour? I mean, you know, I, I spoke in Parliament about the care program and the, the, you know, the limitations of it because of the way it was rolled out. And it, the, un, the economy continues to contract. You know, the person's disposable income is shrinking. The longer it gets, the harder it gets for yes. people. And it was very front-ended in the sense that for ex all of the arrangements which were for the less formal sector or persons who are unemployed and so on, those were done up front mm -hmm. and, um, and haven't been repeated. So, and then for many people, for example, for the small business grant and so on, to get through the door, you had to have show registration that was current as at the time that COVID started. Many people, including artists and so on, were unable to access that. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, the system was done so meticulous and rigid that it excluded many people who would have otherwise qualified. And I think a little more flexibility could have been shown there. And I said as well, you know, we need to be careful that we don't allow the economy um, to result in social dislocation and social unrest, which could further damage the economy. So although I sympathize with the Minister of Finance trying to finance his, co his whole COVID response without borrowing any money and trying to be very tight around that, I think at this time we have to be a little bit more flexible because we know where we're going and we want to get the public debt down mm -hmm. to a manageable level. And we've been on that path for several years now and we're committed to it. But in our crisis, sometimes you have to be a little bit more flexible so that the thing don't just mash up. And I think that this is, I was encouraging him yesterday to think along those lines so more can be done for the people who need it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, <clears throat> someone like you mm -hmm. will be held accountable. Yeah. Well, pressure will come at you. Mm -hmm. And because you are, you're the, the soundtrack of mm -hmm. your life mm -hmm. is reggae mm -hmm. slash dance mm -hmm. The soundtrack of your life. Because you, you were born, mm -hmm. you're about, you and the, the music mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. are about the same age. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. born in 1965. I'm 55 years old. Right. So the yeah. music is a little bit older than you. A little bit older. I mean. and, that, and so it's the soundtrack of yeah. your life. Yes. And we're seeing more and more mm -hmm. leaders, mm -hmm. including the prime minister, mm -hmm. embracing, consuming, and talking about music. Yeah. So now, more pressure will be brought to bear on gentlemen like you and ladies, mm -hmm. who are, I call some, some of them dance hall, children of dance hall, mm -hmm. who now are going to be pressured into make it, make it better mm -hmm. for, do, for those who choose to do that for a living. Yeah, man. And the glory... Mm -hmm. It brings to all of us mm -hmm. the successes yeah. that we're getting overseas and all around the world. Absolutely. I mean, look, Jamaica is on the map and is known internationally largely because of yes. reggae music. That is one of the biggest things. Rastafari, twin with reggae music, twin with ganja. And I want to tell you, one of the things that I had, one of the most important things I have done for Jamaica in my time was to pioneer and push through the legislation for the decriminalization of ganja. Many yes. musicians have benefited from that. Remember Toots himself, when he wrote 5446 was mm -hmm. my number, was because he had an experience incarcerated because of a, 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 a draw weed, which he claimed wasn't even his anyway. And similarly, Bonnie Whaler had a similar experience, you know? Mm -hmm. And both of those, uh, Bonnie, Whaler, Bonnie Whaler come from Second Street in Trenchtown. And, and Toots was living in Trenchtown too. And I'm the MP for Trenchtown, so I take them things very seriously, yes. you know? So, 
I don't think it can be a one-way street. Politicians can't just use music to g up a crowd or right. to big up themselves or whatever. You have to understand the music, you have to embrace the music, you have to support the music, right? Because it's a, it, it is a source of so much of Jamaica's strength, our brand strength, our international recognition, and the livelihood of many, many of our people. So I think it has to be a symbiotic relationship. There must give, be give and take. We must support, support for support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, mm -hmm. well, it's good to know that. Mm -hmm. So... The knowledge, the mm -hmm. experience is in government now, mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Whether in opposition or in or yeah. leading yeah. <laughs> or mm -hmm. in government. Mm -hmm. So we no more excuse, we want to see change, we want mm -hmm. venues, we want that that zone where people can dance from yesterday till tomorrow. Same. Okay? Yeah, we man. want gainful employment in the space. Yeah. We yeah. want to we want we want artists to be to get help mm -hmm. when they go overseas promoting the hello to Jamaica mm -hmm. to the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. When they go to venues, I've been to many many places in the world with artists on tour mm -hmm. to get a first hand look at the impact of our culture mm -hmm. and cultures mm -hmm. around the world. Yeah, and I have seen with my own eyes and captured and reported how people are responding, and it's not matching how we are treating it back here. True. And I think that, for example, the budget, the, 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 the big spend for tourism, mm -hmm. to promote hotels and Jamaica, come to Jamaica, artists are probably more effective mm -hmm. than those ads, those expensive ads in mainstream media overseas. We had an interesting idea in, 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 the, in our manifesto in the last election. Um, we, one of the ideas we had was that the tourist board ought to sponsor um, broadcasting college radio for Jamaican music. So yes. that, yeah, so that all across the eastern and western seaboard of the United States and maybe other places too. So our music could be heard, you know, new and upcoming artists along with the traditionals and, and, and classics of the music. Because we want to ensure that generations to come all around the world in our major markets for our music continue to be exposed to it. And this is something that the state could do to support the industry. You know, that was just one idea, but I thought it was a good idea. And the, um, the, the zones is another. And the tools of trade, the free, the duty-free importation of, of studio equipment and musical equipment is a third. When I was on the entertainment board, when um, Portia Simpson Miller was the Minister of Tourism, she put me on the entertainment board. It was tourism and entertainment then. And that was something that we championed at the time, you know. And there are other issues like film, for example. Uh, uh, you know, how, we, uh, how do we incentivize persons to come here and yes. produce films? which music will benefit from. It's not just music, because it's entertainment, mm -hmm. right? So it's a wider thing than, than music, though music is a critical part of that. And the, the, you know, we, the, the, the treaties that Jamaica needs to sign to become a destination for film investment, that's something we were looking at. I don't think much progress has been made in that area. So I think that, you know, we, need, we need to really put more emphasis and more um, diligent focus around some of the things that will help us to really move the thing forward, because creative industries must be part of the economic future of the country, right? We've seen the vulnerability of tourism, you know, where so much of our economy is, is in, at a standstill because of things largely beyond our control, people not coming here because of the COVID situation, you know? So other areas, other sectors need to be built up. Agriculture being one, for example, manufacturing related to agriculture, manufacturing unrelated to agriculture as well, but also the creative industries, which was our creative talents as a Jamaican people, yes. you know, were rated around the world. Unmatched um, in unma my view. Well, there you go. I don't think there's any other country except the UK mm -hmm. and the US. Yeah. Of course, the US would be number one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're, we're, we're battling the, US, the UK yeah. for number two in yeah. music, you know. Well, there you go. In music, yeah. not just music. I mean, a whole modern black American genre of hip hop and so on, and everything that's come off of that. We know, say, dancer was the origin of that. Yeah. And, and, you know, and the, it is now recognized, even in the US. Reggaeton, uh, yeah, Afrobeat, uh, there, Afrobeat. Dance all, all so, over. Yeah, you know, and yeah. The, even our language, the Jamaican language, the yes. language of our people, is a language which has spawned in the UK. Urban youths, that's what they're, they're speaking a variety of yeah, that. Of course. Yeah, and the street in, culture. Yeah, the street culture stuff. Of the UK, mm -hmm. of London. Mm -hmm. And many, many people around the world rate, even, rate the Jamaican culture and rate the Jamaican language. In fact, they rate it more than we rate it. Yes, you know? of course. Yeah, and we need to learn to rate it and respect it and, and, and use it to, to further our development in positive ways. Okay, sir. So, mm -hmm. the big question now for you. Mm -hmm. And back to the campaign. Why should the PNP delegates choose you? over Miss 
Hannah. <laughs> well, I know what over Miss Hannah, you know? Lisa, my <laughs> friend still, and respect Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, but I bring to the table technical competence and an understanding of the issues of state, whether it be governance issues, legislative issues. I've been a leading corporate attorney. I'm respected in the private sector after years of serving, you know, doing, working on many of the big transactions, cross-border and domestic transactions. I've started two different investment firms which were very successful, Daring Bunting and Golding Limited, which I started with Chris Daring and Peter Bunting, and then Proven Investments, which is still going strong. Um, as a Minister of Justice, I was in charge of the legislative portfolio of the government at the time, which was very heavy because of the IMF agreement, and we delivered all of that legislation on time, and we got through the program successfully. So I am somebody who has competence and capacity in the areas of substance that are needed, I think, and I think the Jamaican people and the People's National Party has a tradition of, um, of wanting leaders who are very strong technically and in terms of their intellectual capacity and so on. I also have a, a reputation as a straight shooter, as a person of integrity, an ethical person. And I think the combination of those things and my experience will help me to bring resources to the party. I have organizational skills as somebody who's been in business. Um, I've, the law firm I'm in, when I joined that law firm, it was just three old guys and myself as a young youth. Um, and now Heart Married Fata is, lead, is ranked internationally as one of the top tier law firms in Jamaica. I think we have 12 partners now and a bunch of associate attorneys as well. So I've built many businesses and I've built organizations. I, I have a caring heart and a respect for people. I don't have any enemies in the party. And in terms of how I deal with my constituency, I got the most votes in the last election of any candidate for the People's National Party. And I got, went up by over 1,000, around 1,400, 500 votes versus what I got when I first went in in the by-election in 2017. And I think when you look at the strength of the constituency, how I've brought in young people through the PMP YO into South St. Andrews YO organization, we have over 100 active members, and, they, and I include them and support them. And I think the PNP needs further strength in appealing to young people. Okay. And to do that is not just about wearing clerks or calling yourself a name, you know. It's how you deal with young people, how you fashion policies that can help them to get ahead in life, and how you, how you respect them and integrate them into what you are doing. And I think I'm showing in how I organize my constituency and the plans I have for the PMPYO and the Patriots in the party, an appreciation of where we need to go in terms of positioning the party to appeal to young people, while by no means forgetting that the, our bedrock of support is the more mature voters who know where we're coming from and know the benefits of the People's National Party's orientation towards social justice and upliftment to the masses of the people. All right, so you, Lisa is my friend, you say. Yeah, man. <laughs> Will you take a, a job in her? administration of course if she were to of course of course of course yes. i mean yeah anything. and you will support her if you don't get the the presidency well i won't have to because she, i'm going to get the presidency <laughs> but um <laughs> in answer to your question yeah whatever happens lisa is welcome fully and i look forward to working with lisa um going forward whatever card play but I fully expect to be the leader of the party come the 7th of November, and I fully expect Lisa to come on board as she has pledged she will. We've, we've been friends from before politics, from before, long ago. We, we met in the early 90s. I'm not going to go into the circumstances of that, but she and I know how we, how we're, where we're coming from. How fractured is the PNP now, and what would you do to, to bring people back together, to, to rebuild the PNP? <laughs> and will it not you, be more, funny, funny more fractured after this? Prior to the general election, mm -hmm. I personally felt that the party was more cohesive than we had been for some time. Efforts had been made in the last year leading up to the election. Maybe they could have been more intense and happened earlier, but they eventually took place to really reconcile everybody and get everybody back on, on one team. But the perception, even amongst the base, and outside of the party is one that there were lingering divisions. And since the election now, I have heard and seen manifestations of persons still hanging on to issues of the past. You know, and my message to everybody is, look, this is past campaigns are no longer relevant. You know, we have just okay. suffered a catastrophic defeat. We have to rebuild our party. And the only way we're going to do that is if we come together around a common purpose. And in dealing with each other, Respect must be the order of the day. 
There must be discipline in how we communicate with, with the wider public in terms of how we use social media and how we treat with each other in our meetings and elsewhere. And so I, I, I'm all about a disciplined approach to those things, but a respectful and loving approach to each other mm -hmm. and embracing everybody. And I'm very pleased that in my campaign, my campaign chairman was somebody who was not on the same side as me a, a year ago in the internal contest. Oh, yeah? yeah, my campaign communications person is the same and several other persons who are, are important members of my campaign are persons who weren't, happened to not be on the same side last year. Last year is last year. This is a new era for the People's National Party. We have to draw a line in the sand and move forward as one strong force because that's the only way we're going to resume the noble mission that was started back in 1938 by Norman Washington Manley and his colleagues at the time. Yeah, man. Okay, Sir Golden. Yeah, man. Thank you very much, sir, for Thank coming you. and sharing so much with us. Thank and to you. Blow, us, blow us away with your credentials in music and entertainment. <laughs> So you know what I mean? I wouldn't um, even talk about sports, but that's a whole different oh, wow. story. <laughs> well, you know, I wouldn't give a sports <laughs> <laughs> show that yeah, one. That, they can take that one. Yeah, man, cool. But thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Respect and thanks. And, um, yeah. and so that's it. That's the man right here mm -hmm. vying for the presidency of the People's National Party. Mm -hmm. And by extension, the top office. Mm -hmm. That of Prime Minister of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Now... Miss Anna, you're welcome yeah, to come and sit with us. Okay, so anytime, Lisa, we're right here. All right, so stay with us, still to come right here on our stage. Orville, the dance professor, we'll be back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> stage so much more than entertainment dance expressions is well known for their mastery of popular dance moves in the jamaican space but not many of us are aware of the scope of their contribution to the globalization of our dance or culture and wait until you hear what its leader, Orville, the dancing professor, comes to our stage right now to tell us. <laughs> professor, sir, welcome. Blessed, blessed, <laughs> blessed. It's always a pleasure, brother. Welcome, Benji. Yes, yes, and when yes, you come, a good news. Yes, man. Good things yeah, always man. go on when yeah, you man. come. So, congratulations. And tell us now. You tell us yeah, what man. happened recently for you. We <laughs> now have a fully accredited dance hall program. Yes. Fully accredited by Hart NC Tibet. So over a three-year period, I am supposed to train 240 dancers. Oh. Yeah, man. And these are local dancers? Local dancers. And this, it took you six years to get this accreditation? Six years. It, it, it took me, well, the, the, the brainchild was about 15 years, mm -hmm. you know, from about 2005. You know, that I've, I've always wanted to put dance hall at a place in, in our society that it can get a certain level of respect, that yes. dancers can get respect. But you know, as we evolve, we have to train certain things about ourselves as dancers. Mm -hmm. There's a certain discipline that yes. goes with it that you know, I had to spend some time to, to reason with dancers and say, you are not, you're not the, at the bottom of the food chain. You know? Mm -hmm. you know, it's just understanding 
what comes with being a professional, you know. But because of how dance was viewed, most dancers just figure, say, boy, I do a little thing, I do a little dance thing for now and then later on, I might have to find another job and Ray. So now we are saying that dancers can be accredited. When a dancer go to a hotel yes. or go to a certain place to, to, to get a dance gig, you are presenting a piece of paper that speaks to the fact that you are now an accredited member of the space and should be treated and paid accordingly. And there's a, an e-registry, you know, which if you are accredited, you will be registered and published. Which is what we've been the working registry. for. This is what we've been working for. Because for. that's where the world is. Yes, ma'am. People are going to research you. Mm -hmm. If, for example, they are coming down to Jamaica to, to, to take lessons, mm -hmm. or they are calling you to a destination, so a destination overseas yeah. to teach them that. Yeah, ma'am. If they look in that registry and can't find you, and that you are, you are now giving them a pathway to that registry. When a man put him credentials in there, he and, will be called. And I've been wishing this for dancers locally, especially in the dancehall sphere for, for let me say, like for 15 years. I've been seeking this because when we go overseas, mm -hmm. we just take the natural talent with us. This is now putting us in a place where we are looked at with far more respect than what was happening before. So um, I, have to, I have to say thanks to Kenisha Campbell, who spearheaded this from 2014 with me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and saw it right through because there are times when I, I really felt yes. that it's, maybe it's not going to happen, you know, but I have some persons who st stuck out the whole thing with me. And then when me do is make sure that I stayed visible for people to see where dance can take you. So when I was running out into the world from 2012 and doing tours, and recently counted 35 countries that I have toured, and I'm not talking about cities, I'm talking about when you're going to one country, you're doing five, six cities, mm -hmm. and then moving on to another country. So it's, it's 35 countries that I've taken the, 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 the cultural side of dance to, you know, having people understand where dance is coming from in Jamaica, because we don't, we cannot speak just about dance all without speaking about everything that came before it, mm -hmm. which is a rich, rich history. And um, I've also added the whole scope of community tourism to it, mm -hmm. you know, by, by starting something in our community with Mr. Silgarden, where we bring dancers from overseas to come and share in our community. Um, recently, we did presentations to TP Deco, presentation to the mayor's office, to the Ministry of Culture, showing them why our community needs to be a part of the whole entertainment, um, as an entertainment zone. And they have told us that they're going to turn our community into an entertainment zone. I am going to turn to call our place the Dance Hall District. Mm. Because what people don't know is the rich history that comes from the community that I yes. come from. This is the community that housed Cell Block Studio. This is the studio that did the entire Till Shiloh album. That's, that's the birthplace of the Till Shiloh album. And I'm not talking about some of the songs. I'm talking about all of the songs. that. Tell me the name of the community. Speaking yeah, man. Out. This is Jackson Town yes. that we are now aiming to call the Dance Hall District. Mm -hmm. you know, so this is what we're doing. So it goes way beyond dance. And it is, it's, it's also about me showing the youths where I stand so they can aspire to get to here. And now putting something on the table that a youth can come and get accredited for what he's doing. And tell us about some of the places you're pulling people from to Jamaica to, to, to be taught by you, to learn the moves it's of dance. It's literally, um, especially Europe, where our biggest market is. Mm -hmm. So we're taking people from Germany, we're taking people from Austria, we're taking people from Spain. It's literally all over Europe, you know. But weren't you in China? Asian yes, man. We said. just did in, and, and this is January. Yes. In January, just myself, before COVID. Just before COVID, I got back to Jamaica on the second of February. Myself and Shelley did five countries in Asia. We started in China. We went to um, we went to India, where we performed a forty-five minute set on the Goa Sunsplash stage. That's where you get to um, main acts. We were a main act in front of twenty-five thousand people in in India, and then we moved on, we did the Philippines, we did um, Singapore. So we have, when, when COVID started and I, I was back in Jamaica, my biggest online marketplace was Asia. 
we had all of Asia wanting to do online classes because people didn't want to be separated from what is happening here in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So this is why I call out to, to the leaders that be to understand the potency of our culture yes. and invest in it. Because right throughout this, this COVID thing, we still keep Jamaica elevated. Entertainment is what has kept Jamaica on the map for people to see visually what is happening. We didn't stop doing dance classes. We didn't stop going around Jamaica and showing people some of the, the, the beautiful areas and spots in Jamaica. So this is one of the things that myself and Dance Expressions has been doing. We've been doing that. So yesterday when I got the call about the fact that we have the final signature on this dance hall course outline, you can expect what my feeling was after a 15-year brainchild and six years of pursuing this whole thing. How will this change expressions? How will it impact expressions? Especially my core members, Stacey and Shelley, are, are overjoyed about the fact that we have been working so hard and that we have been changing lives. So with this program now, we know that we are now, we are now in the open space where people will be looking to mm. us to be helping to, to change more lives. You know, so we, we, we really have to step up the plate now. All the members of, of Dance Expressions will formally be doing the course as well. You know, so they can have that as a part of what they're doing. I'm looking to find some of the places, not just in Kingston, but um, in rural Jamaica, where we can offer the program as well. Because presently... Okay. So we, there'll be an outreach arm to this? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the first place may I try and move to is Montego Bay because of what is happening in Montego Bay. You know, if you try to take out some of the youths them out of the inner cities and, and, and give them some kind of vision, because the, the we have dancers down there and we have youths who just feel like, say, they're not going anywhere mm -hmm. with being a dancer. Heart has provided us with um, two locations. They've yeah. given us Garmex downtown as a training spot, and they've given us Heart um, in Portmore as a training ground. And I have to big up GC Foster College, who is now on board with us so the program can be taught from GC Foster College as well. Oh, you wow. know? So I want to have a couple of outreach programs in some of the rural areas. So, so you is, are likely to get called by other um, absolutely. educational institutions yeah, across the island? That is what I'm Which hoping for. And, and so on? That is what I'm hoping for, because we really want to... There is a wealth of talent here, mm -hmm. and we have to start believing and knowing that it is our duty you know, people like myself and others in my space to create what we want to see for the future. And we have to create it. We can't separate ourselves from the youth. Then. How do they get into your classes? What qualifies them to attend your classes? From you have the ability for dance. Mm -hmm. from, your, from, from your dancer. Remember, you are basically paid for. 240 students are already paid for. Mm -hmm. You just need to complete the course. It's a one semester course. So dedicate three months out of your life, get a certification that you can speak with more authority you know, in a, on your rock and overseas. What will they take away that they didn't bring with them from the, those classes? The history, the history of the evolution of the Jamaican music and dance. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, that, that alone will tell you that they, they, they are now going to be versatile in being able to speak about dance from before Skia, from a traditional folk forms. So this is, this is empowerment within itself. Mm -hmm. And this is, is, the course is 80% practical and 20% theory. So the 20% theory is really telling them the history of dance in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. you know, and that has been lacking in our space. Because being a judge on Dancing Dynamite for 15 years, this is one of the things that I used to, I've been asking for. Can we have workshops that will educate the youth them about yes. the history of the dance, not just physically? Mm -hmm. What they're bringing to us already is natural talent. Them forward and them can dance Bro, and them yes. rah, rah talent. How do we hone this? How do we harness this? And how do we direct it? Ah. You know, because that is one of the things. Do you we, ascend you know, we, these we youths? Can, yeah, we can't yes. leave it at just the training, but we have to direct them mm -hmm. as well, you know? So those fundamentals yeah, man. are what missing. We're so talented. And it's right across the board. Yeah, man. It's right across the board. And some artists need to attend to. Brother. Some artists. We, oh, man, we're artists. We come to your class. Because some, some if, discipline if in what know, they do. If they don't know part of the history, you know, 
in the nineties, you know, I was the grooming instructor for a tasty talent competition, you know. Yes. So even people like Mr. Vegas can tell you, I was a, the grooming instructor just so people understand what kind of discipline you take to the stage. Uh -huh. You know, what kind of energy you go on the stage with, what, what persona you take. Your performance start an hour before you go on the stage. Mm -hmm. Your performance don't start on the stage, you know. What zone, yes. what do you want to say to the people? And that in itself, is a part of what you do. This is your pre-preparation before you actually go on stage. This is why dance expressions has always been relevant from we of have course. been visible because we understand that as a dancer, nobody wants to hear an excuse why a performance was not good. Yes. So you have to get to the venue on time, look what, what you're working with. Remember we work some fest stage and we work some stage where when you get there, the stage mm -hmm. is already set. They're not setting it specifically for dancers. So how do you work around this? The only way you can do that is being there on time and being in the frame of mind, telling yourself that no matter what is there, I am here to do a performance. I'm here to be on my best behavior because it's not just about the booking. For me, it's the rebooking. Yeah, because the kids need to know that there is a commercial dimension to this. Yes, and the only way you can access that dimension get into that space yes. where you are earning mm -hmm. is that you have to understand mm -hmm. the way it works. Everything has ways that they work. They're not just happen. You just said it. <laughs> you live on the street and you know every dance, a dance and you have the wickedest thing and put you on a stage, you're lost. You're lost. How do you utilize that stage? Certain space though, not even just the stage itself, you know, but certain space where yes. dance expressions wrote the book on what dancehall is in corporate Jamaica, oh. the females of dance expressions. And that came with compromise as well. Mm -hmm. This is how the evolution of the dance was born because I was priding myself as having the first firm dancehall group in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But we started going to events where people want to see just more than dancehall. Yes. I still wanted to keep it Jamaican. So what did I do? I didn't add hip hop. Not mm -hmm. that we couldn't add hip hop, but when I look at the rich history that we have in dance, let's add that. Unexploited. Let's, yeah, let's add some junk yes. Let's add some dinky mini. Let's add some brookings. Let's add some ska, some reggae, some dancehall. And then mix the pot. And let's get the costumes to fit it. So corporate Jamaica would say now, when you're throwing your dancehall at the end of a program like this now, people can appreciate because they can see the connection leading up to this. So this is why it is important for us to be knowledgeable about our own thing where we have a yard or so, which is rich, rich, rich. Learning, consuming, in a structured way. In a structured you have to structure way. it. Yeah, for, we, for us to understand. We have to get rid of this thing where we, we keep painting dance all like we're happy for be street. Yes. And we're happy for be disorganized. And we're yes. happy for just throw it out there because are we that. No. The rest of the world, that's not what it, it got, is. It got if left we, that. We, we leave that space a long time. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and the, the, the bigger people in the, the bounties and the beanies learn that. Mm -hmm. I remember them I come from the street too, but yeah. they understood that my favorite road manager, different from just an ordinary manager, I'm a booking agent and Marie, and I forgot to look at voice training and I forgot to understand how to use a stage. And this is how they have, this is how a bounty killer and a beanie man could have easily make Jamaica look as good as we looked during Versus. Yes. Because of that discipline that they garnered over the years and realized, say, who I was in 1993 when I stepped on Sting stage is, is not who I am now. We can draw from that catalog. And a lucky thing. And I just, you born with it, me no born with okay. it. No. It is about. It can be acquired. Yeah, man. And who better for talk about that than me? But come in, it's not a different space may I come from. Yes. Or the same space may I come from. And I have been creating pathways. During the pandemic, myself and Dance Expression said, so let's explore another side of us. And we, we, we start with YouTube channel. We revive yes. the YouTube channel and watch that channel grow from 4.6K subscribers to presently 16 point something subscribers. Mm -hmm. And we're doing a little program called The Bartender. Yes. And we watch people watch that thing every Sunday. Now, that is our next medium that I can say to a youth say, be a part of this dance program and you can matriculate to that space as well. Because I'm not just training a dance, I'm training a performer. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? The ultimate thing for dance expressions, Winford, is for us to have an institution that teaches everything Jamaican. Yes. Dance hall, how to play reggae. I've been around the world, I hear some man I play reggae and them I said them I do it. But there's something about how we play reggae music. There's something about our roots plays. 
when we are telling a story from the Jamaican perspective, oh, yes. there's a way, a roots play of a, a kind of a, a, a kind of pizzazz about it where we have to understand how to do it. So if a man can teach classical music a particular way, we can teach dance all a particular way. Mm. I want to have an institution that teaches music, dance, and drama from the Jamaican perspective. Of course. Because the world wants it. Of course, my youth. Yes, man. So for those who are looking on now, no, excited about your classes, yeah. how do they go about reaching you, reaching, um, registering, um, mm -hmm. getting in the program? What do they right, do what now? Is happening, what is happening presently is that we are doing they're doing the facility audits. Mm. So they're doing the facility audits at all three areas that we are doing in okay. Kingston and-, and, and the government. The government is doing that. So once they, they, they're finished the facility audit, which should be in another two weeks, then we plan our launch. Okay. And I then gotcha. now we, um, by, the, by, by December, we are ready to go. We are ready okay, to start. Okay, so your first course. semester would be in the first quarter? In the first quarter. Year. Yes. Okay. So um, it's Orville Expressions on Instagram. It's Theatre Expressions, and it's Expressions without the E. So it's Theatre Expressions at gmail.com, mm -hmm. which is the, the fastest way um, to get to us. And um, that's basically it. Yes. That's basically it. Just look for my Orville Expressions and send me a DM message. Shelley Expressions, send a DM message. Stacey Expressions, send a DM message. We'll give you all the information because we're ready to go. Well, Congratulations again, sir. And brother, may I say, you have followed this journey. Yes. From the inception, from, from it was just a brainchild. Couldn't resist. You have followed this Can't journey resist. right through till now, brother. So it, every time I sit in this chair, it is a joy because people know that I am coming to tell people about what we are doing and how we can help others. It's not about oh, yeah. you come help me. It's about us helping ourselves so others will look on and say, let's give them a helping hand too. My friend, one day we'll mm. sit again. And we'll yes. talk about your own personal, very personal journey. Yes, sir. As, a, yes, as sir. an authentic Jamaican ghetto, middle class, upper class boy. <laughs> yeah, man. Because yeah, you're, you're traveling. Yes, man. You're, you, are, you are credibly Jamaican in all its glory, this man. Yes. He's Jamaican. Mm. You call him about the culture and a him. Him, can, him alone is the Jamaican culture on foot. Yes, sir. <laughs> a walk around. <laughs> this man. That's why I'm named the professor. <laughs> okay? Brother, we'll take care of you, sir. Yes, brother. We yeah. will be following everything you're doing and continue to report no, on thing. all the great things that are to come. Thank you so much. Blessed love. Okay, so that's our show for this week. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, Thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more on stage. Take a miss cat because you come from a shit up. Anywhere you go with that for y'all and pull up. Thanks for watching our video. Please click subscribe and be on our stage anywhere, anytime, always.